get into our seats here. Wanted to, wanted to, well, first off, thank you, the, the Smay family. That was great. Great job again for that. And the, the worship band, I love that new song. I love that, love that. And then, again, so just Angie Dickman, and I wrote some names down. I'm going to forget people, but I know um, Catherine Brown helped kind of decorate everything. Uh, Larry Brown and Rick did the outside lights, the Berkeys, and Nadine, and Nadine Flander, and, and, and I, yeah. And there's others, there, there's, there's others that I can't name, but um, yeah, give it up for them. Oh, and then as we begin, maybe our, our members uh, got a letter in the mail about the special meeting, and so we're just, we just bump that one more week, uh, so it's going to be next Sunday, and some people are asking, is this going to be a long meeting? No, uh, Dave Niffler's doing it, so it's going to be quick, okay, but there's, and the letter explains what it's all about, so, <clears throat> so, but that's, so that's. Next Sunday, December 10th, following our, our normal service. Um, so, yeah, please, we, we really do want and need your uh, input with that stuff. So, anyway, on to the sermon. We are in the book of Matthew for Advent and uh, kind of the weeks leading up to Christmas, right? And last week we looked at, like Ross mentioned, the, the genealogy. And we found that God was at work in the, in the scoundrels and the screw-ups that made up Jesus' family tree. And, and this week, we have a challenge that we really didn't have last week. Because, to, you know, last week, again, I mentioned, with the genealogy, you just skip over that, right? So it's kind of like some of us, we, we've read that before. We, we heard a song last week all about that. But... but this, what the challenge is that this is a very familiar text, right? Every Christmas, it's Mary, it's Joseph. We think we know the story, right? And, and we do. It's, it's, I'm not going to throw something crazy at you, but, but that's part of the challenge is seeing, seeing it, hearing it with fresh eyes, fresh ears. And, and so if you got your Bibles, uh, turn them to Matthew chapter 1. Turn your phone on if you got the Bible app. Or if you don't have any of that, we got it on the screen here. We're going to be kind of zeroing in on Joseph because that's what Matthew, Matthew does. But so we're, we're starting in verse 18. So Matthew 1, verse 18. It literally starts with, uh, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was, a faithful, was faithful to the law, and yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. All right, now pause here. So... This is actually where growing up in a small town is, is extremely helpful for, for reading the Bible because uh, so our, we know that archaeologists have, have dug up like where the original Nazareth, right, right where Mary and Joseph kind of grew up. It's super small. I mean, think Lorenzo small, okay? Yeah, like you know, 500 people max. We're talking 40-ish tight-knit families. That's what we're dealing with, okay? And so um, th think of it like everybody knows everybody. And again, we, we sort of know what that's like living in Sydney. Joseph's father would have would have known Mary's father, right? These... The, 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 Picture, if you've seen Fiddler on the Roof or that mu musical, right, Matchmaker, you know, think of it like that. These families knew each other, right? What if Mary and Joseph grew up together? What if they literally knew the, the, each other their whole life, right? Like some of us, including me, I, I just kind of thought that, you know, courting or dating Back then was like today. It it wasn't okay. It just it just wasn't. These 
These families knew each other well, and the fathers would have kind of been watching and for years maybe seeing, oh, I, this, could, this could work out, right? Mary and Joseph, and, um, and again, so, so they're engaged. We, we just read that. They're engaged. They're not technically married, but, but you heard it, right? Would, would we use the term divorce Right when when it's just breaking off an engagement, we, we, no, like we we wouldn't use that term. That term is for like today, just like for the breaking of the marital covenant. Right, the what you stand up on a church in front of witnesses and God, that'd be yeah, you you divorce then, not an an engagement, right? But that just goes to show you how powerful that family engagement was. So again, these are real life people, Mary and Joseph. They, they've had a history together. There's deep love. There is excitement, right? And they're young. I mean, Mary, 12, 13, 14, Joseph's maybe a little older. I mean, these are teenagers, okay, but they're, but they're ready, right? They, they, they are. Um, there's excitement in the air. The families are excited. Think of it like that. The town is excited. Have you ever thought? But Nazareth is excited for, the, for these two, two th- this couple here. Um, and then can you imagine... What would happen to Joseph? Maybe it was a friend that came to him and said, "Hey, buddy, I, I got. I, I was looking at the wind blew right, and I, I saw Mary, and it it looks like she's pregnant." Joseph would go to Mary with the with the questions that you would ask, "Who? You know, when?" How? Like, wh- why? I mean, all, all of those. I mean, that's, yeah. And she tells him the story that no sane person would believe. God did it. Yeah, we, we laugh at that. And yeah, God, God did it. God, sp- God spoke to her and told her that the Holy Spirit would come and overshadow her. And, and we get this language from Luke, right? So, Luke's gospel goes into Mary's kind of vantage point while Matthew stays with Joseph. But, yeah, but, but let's, let's read on. In verse 20, Joseph is, is just going to kind of divorce her quietly. Verse 20 reads this, though. But after he had, he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Now again, we got let's pause here. This is super interesting because Joseph has this dream, this vision dream, and he's told in the dream what Mary told him that this child is indeed conceived of the Holy Spirit. But now let's 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 pull on that thread a little bit. Conceived of the Holy Spirit. Why, why did why did Matthew say that? You know, conceived of the Holy Spirit. We we have in, in Greek mythology that you took in high school, like you, you learned about. Like we we have these stories, right? Of 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 the gods coming down, right? And and. Um, having offspring with mortals. We, we think of Hercules, right? That Disney made that popular. And uh, Hercules is the son of Zeus and Al- Al- Alchemina. I think I'm, I don't know if I'm saying that right. She's a mortal woman. Hercules is known for incredible strength. Another one, Achilles. Uh, Achilles is the hero of the Trojan War, is the son of the mortal Peleus and the sea nymph Thetis. 
Thetis attempted to make Achilles immortal by dipping him in the river Styx, but his heel was left out. That's why Achilles' heel. Some of us are looking confused, but if you remember from high school, you, you know, you, you at least were, were aware of those stories. Those stories were very much popular and alive back in Matthew's day, right, or, or Joseph and Mary's day. And so, so why not just say God, or why not say God's power would come upon Mary. But no, Matthew specifically mentions the Holy Spirit. Now, can we think of another story with the Holy Spirit that is said to give life in, a, in, in the place that could not happen, maybe should not happen, Oh, yes, yes, yes. Page one of the Bible. I, I, I keep on, you should be sick of me telling you all roads lead back to page one of the Bible. But on page one, we, verse one of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God, was hovering over the waters. Formless, empty darkness. Boy, boy that, does that sound like a virgin womb? Teenage girl's virgin womb. God's personal presence is, is there in the womb just like he was on page one, right? That in the midst of the darkness, and wh what do we see on page one happening? Out, out of nothingness comes land and trees and sky and seas and, and eventually a garden. So Matthew is marking Jesus as utterly unique, without precedent. This is not Hercules. This, this is not Achilles. This is not a story of God having sex with Mary. This is a story of creation. Do you see? Do you see the difference between the two? Something totally unique is happening here. We call it the virgin birth, right? And it's utterly remarkable and without precedent. Now, the angel's not giving done giving Joseph orders. He wraps up in verse 21. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Leave this up a little bit, Anne. I'd like to leave this up. Now, the name Jesus literally means Yahweh saves. Um, Yehoshua, or, or shortened Yeshua. Jesus, right? It, it literally means Yahweh saves, okay? So, so this child to be born... His name is Yahweh saves. So, so does, does the child save or does Yahweh saves? Exactly. <laughs> right? This is, this, think about this. The child's name is Yahweh saves. So, so does Yahweh saves or the child saves? Now, now we're getting to what, Ma what the whole book of Matthew is about. Right, we're, 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 we're getting to the heart of the issue here is who, who is this child, right? It, is, is Matthew saying what I think he's saying, that, that this baby is, is Yahweh come near, that this baby is God with a belly button? Yeah. J Jesus has come to... to save his people, right? His people from their sins. Notice it says, it says he will save his people. 
It, it doesn't say, we want it to say all people, right? Like, like I, I want it to say that Jesus has come to save everybody. The Bible does not believe in universalism, okay? So who are God's people? Well, again, Matthew chapter 1, read that genealogy, right? I mean, it's the family of Abraham. It's, it's the nation of Israel, right? It's, the, the, that's, the, that's the people. Jesus is their long-awaited Messiah. Now, if you, if you keep reading in the book of Matthew, you will see that at the tail end, Israel rejects Jesus. They didn't think he looked like the Messiah, talked like the Messiah, hung out with people that the Messiah should be hanging out with. They reject him. They kill him. They hang him on a tree, cross. The book of John says it like this. And, Ann, you don't have this, so don't worry. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. We, we looked at this last Advent. But to those who do receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gives the right to be called children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. That's what the entire book of Acts is about, is, is the, the apostles stumbling upon the fact that, whoa, 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 God's opening the door for Gentiles, for, for non-Jewish people to come in. And that's a, that's a whole other sermon. So, so we got to come back to, to, to Matthew, though, because Matthew tells us more about Jesus. Verse, verse 22 all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will, will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. I wish I had Zara with me. It means God with us. So 750 years before Jesus, before Mary and Joseph, before this story, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah in, in Isaiah 7, 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel. This is what we call him. It literally means God with us. And, you know, for, for, for months now, before we did Advent, we were looking at, at Exodus, the book of Exodus, right? And in Exodus, yeah, God shows up, but he shows up in a burning bush to, to Moses, and then, amazingly, pillar of fire, right? And, and a cloud of smoke in the, in the daytime, and then, and we're going to get there, but, but elsewhere on on Mount Sinai with, with Moses, when, when, God, when Moses is like, I just want to see you. I want to know you more. And, and God says, you can't see me, okay? You can't do it. Tell you what, I'll put you in a cleft of the rock. I'm going to pass by and proclaim my name to you. And you can see the back of my head. That's as good as you're going to get, Moses. So, now. So we get that in the Old Testament, and then th Jesus, as a baby, is here. You can hold this baby, right? It's, and, and, and this means that Jesus, and this baby's going to grow, right? Just like babies grow. And, and, and this this God who is holy and, and uh, unapproachable, God becomes a human that can be known, that can be touched, and you can laugh with him. You can walk with him. You can eat with him, right? And, and, and today, through faith, we can know that 
that fellowship, that relationship. But now and, and I'm going to kind of, this is where the sermon kind of turns a little bit because I just kind of want to pull on this string. Apart from faith, what else does it take to have a real relationship with Jesus? It's something that, that I think we, we, we can, it can be easily overlooked. Yes, it's faith, but also courage. Consider Mary and Joseph. Mary's pregnant with Joseph. Joseph knows he's not the father. If he goes through with this marriage, everyone in that small town are going to know one of two things. Either... They had premarital sex, which back then was a no-no, or Mary slept around with Joseph, behind Joseph's back. Regardless, Mary and Joseph's life together, right, in a, in a shame and honor society, back then, if they, if they go through with this, they are second-class citizens. There is shame all about them, whispers, rumors, all of it. For the rest of their lives. You don't just, you don't just move away, okay? <laughs> like, like the engagement, the engagement that would have taken place, again, once the fathers kind of figured it out, oh, these two, yeah. Joseph would have had about a year to add on to their house. Meaning, so Joseph's had a house and he just adds on a room, okay? But that takes time. You know, it's like for us, it's, you know, months or, you know, I'm just adding on. It would have taken about a year, okay? And so, so you don't just move away, okay? You, you don't do, that's, a, that's the, the family is the safety net. That, that's when, when, when the worst things happen, your family's there, okay? So you don't just leave. So, <coughs> So, yeah, much like today, when, when you trust in, in Christ, when you become a Christian, many of your friends will think you're crazy, right? That, that all of a sudden your reputation goes out the window, um, and they just think you're, 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 something's wrong with you. You're not looking at reality right. Um, and so if, if you're, if, if you want Jesus in your life, it's going to take courage and at least three kinds of courage are, are required. I believe for any believer at any stage of life, number one, the courage to face your friends and family. Again, we we're, we've kind of talked on this, but all of Joseph's friends told him, dude, like, you either got her pregnant or she fooled around with someone else. Like, what are you doing? Can you imagine Joseph trying to explain to his friends the truth? No, no, like, like I had this vision and, and, and God did it and it kind of lined up with what Mary said. And they, can you imagine the, the blank stares of like, you've got to be kidding me. I feel sorry for you. Like, there's pity here. Like, oh, Joseph, you're whipped, or what, whatever, whatever it is, right? And and because the the truth is the truth is is something that Joseph's friends and maybe family just they, they couldn't understand. They would think he's either crazy or gullible. And if you if you're from a family where you're the only Christian in the family, you know what I'm talking about. Number two, the courage to give up your rights. The angel tells Joseph what to name the boy. Now, that's totally Joseph's job. Like, the, like that's, the, that's the male's job is to name the boy. Uh, he, you know, he, I know this sounds weird to us, but probably as a little boy, he maybe had lists of names. Maybe he wanted to have you know, a big family, and, and, and he wanted to keep names in the family. That's a, and, and we know that, that, that because of the lineage, there is no Jesus in his family tree. 
And so, but the angel takes his right, his God-given right, he takes that away from Joseph. And, and, the, and, and so, it's like the angel saying to Joseph, if you want Jesus in your life, you're not his manager, right? Like, he, he's your manager. You don't get to tell him what to do. When you come to Christ, it, it takes courage to, to give up your rights. So, there was a famous song, you know, Jesus, take the wheel, right? But in a lot of ways, literally, that's what disciples, again, I'm not talking about asking Jesus into your heart every year. I'm talking about discipleship. I'm talking about, Jesus, you need to take over. Take, take control of my life. You're in the driver's seat. I'm moving over to the passenger seat. That, again, that's what the Bible, when we keep reading the Bible, Matthew, same book, Matthew 16, 24, says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Forever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Friends, I, though these words of Jesus were always controversial. You, you feel the way, like if you really sit with these words and not just skim past them, but like, what is he saying here? I, I, it's intimidating. I know it's intimidating, but the, the flip side of that coin is how adventurous it is, right? Like, like, like most young people, some of you know this. I have a twin brother, right? And I, guys, we did everything together. <laughs> everything, everything together. All my childhood memories are, are with him. I went, to, I went to college with him. We weren't roommates, but like we were, right? I, I was here, he was here, right? But like I can remember he got, he, sophomore year, he got into he declared a major, youth ministry. About a week later, guess what I did? <laughs> youth ministry, right? I followed, and then, then I remember too, he started hanging out with this girl named Jill. She's now my sister-in-law, right? But I can remember in college, I was like 20-something. He's gone. I don't, knew, I don't know who I am without him. I was 20 years old. And I didn't know who I was, what the heck I was doing. Now, and I, again, I, I, I shared that video with, with, with about Shane Claiborne for a reason. Like, I can remember that, that collision of like really looking at Jesus. And, and, and what does following him look like? And... And now, as I, as I look back over the last 20 years with Jesus at the wheel, and what a ride, what, what a ride it's been. But here's the deal. I needed him to name me. See, a lot of people, we go through life, and around 20s, you're trying to name yourself. You're trying to find yourself. Right? That's what we do. And, and if you don't find yourself, you're going to try it again in your 30s and in your 40s. And you're going to try to find yourself. And what I'm telling you and what I think Jesus is telling you is don't, go to Jesus, find Jesus, and then Jesus will name you. If you give Jesus the wheel of your life, It'll change everything. He will tell, he knows you. He, know, he made you. 
He formed you. He knows everything about you. So why not go to him? And I know it's scary, but it's so amazing. Number three, the courage to admit that you're a sinner. So here in about a little less than a month now, there's going to be presents under the tree. And and it's going to be Christmas morning. And and let's daydream with me. You're there and and you open up your first present and and it's a self-help book, 30 Days to Lose 30 Pounds. And, and you kind of like, oh, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then you get, you get, you, you go around again, then it's your turn again. You open up your second present, and it's a subscription service to Rogaine. And you think, <laughs> thanks, thank you, thank you. Go around again, it's your turn, and, and it's, uh, it, you open it up, it's a gym membership. <laughs> thank you. In your stocking, it's great. It's, it's just full of... Uh, fancy smelling soaps and cologne, and you're like, oh, okay. But then at the end of the day, you realize your family thinks you're an overweight, balding, smelly guy. <laughs> and, and you're just like, now, wait a minute. But, but it, it's humbling to receive gifts. Sometimes it, it can be humbling to, to receive, to take a gift, right? And, 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 and you, when you realize that, oh, I do, you, I do need this. I need this in my life. And this Christmas, are you willing to, to say that you're a moral failure, that you're not perfect in thought, word, and deed, that you don't love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength? that you do not love your neighbor as yourself, if you're radically honest, can you admit that you need a Savior apart from you, a Savior that's not from within you? That that is what Christmas is, that you look at this baby, that you look at this baby that came from outside of you and you say, I I need him. I need him in my life. Let's remember Joseph again. Joseph, uh, we don't know a lot about Joseph, but we do know he's humble. He's courageous. He's honorable. And amidst his disappointments, can, we, can somebody walk with me? He's disappointed. He did not, he, he had his whole life in front of him. This was not a part of his story. He did not see this coming at all. It was a curveball. And, and he's got to go through with it, all the shame, all the whispers. And not only that, but just the waiting more to 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 consummate his marriage, right? I mean, just the timetable doesn't work out for Joseph. But let's read what he does. Verse 24, let's wrap this up. When Joseph woke up from the the vision, the dream, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son And he gave him the name Jesus. He did it. He did it. So how, so, and he's a normal guy, just like me and you, normal person. So how will you get the strength and the courage that Joseph had, right? By looking at Jesus himself. Because if you think it takes courage to to be with him, Consider it took infinitely more courage for Jesus to be with us, right? It took courage for Jesus to leave heaven, become human, become vulnerable, become bleedable. I don't know if that's a word, but able to bleed. And that's what he was. Picture Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, sweating drops of blood because he knew the cross was coming. He faced the cross for you. 
You are worth it to him. Re- remember that, the, and we're going to sing it soon, but that famous Christmas song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, right? There's a line. Mild he lays his glory by. Now what, now what does that mean? It, it means that Jesus voluntarily, willingly, lovingly came for you and for me. No one forced him. He willingly did it. So, so see Jesus doing that for you, and that will draw out your love for him. And then you'll have the courage to put Jesus at the very center of your life. And, and, and then you will have God with us. You will have Emmanuel. And no matter what the world throws at you, and it's going to throw things, it's going to throw hard things that you did not see coming at all. It wasn't in your plan. But you can have Jesus with you. You can have him with you through whatever it is. That's what Christmas, that's what it's about. So we, we found God in the scoundrels and the screw-ups, and, and now we're going to find him right smack dab in our disappointments. He's there. With me. Dad, thank you for this morning, for this time of worship, for meeting us. Right, right where, where we are. I pray your spirit would continue to speak. And Lord, whatever, whatever we're going through, whatever disappointments, and I know, Lord, I know some of them, they're heavy. that you are the God that is with us. And God, I pray that we would go out in, in, in Sydney, Cheyenne County and light it up for you. Can, 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 the, can the world just see there's something different? That we are disciples of Jesus. We want more than just being born again and again. We want to be like Jesus. Give us the strength and the courage and the face, faith to face it. We love you. Thank you for this Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray.